So how does it work? And can you use it? So we know that solar particles are being studied, but how can it work? To understand how it works, you might be able to use it, which we can to an extent. Now we've established that the effects from the sun come in bursts. We call these red spikes. Or when there's a group of red spikes, we call them SWIPs, solar weather impact period. Now I won't go into how we predict these, but they're about something coming from the sun, something about motion in the in the solar wind and its linkages with the earth. Okay? We can predict when these will occur. Just to give an example, we didn't know this at the time, but we had a very particular interesting SWIP or red spike, which in my calculation was going to be very important. Then I read, or I think Ulrich told me, where's Ulrich, do you want to wave him? There he is. He told me, he said, there's, there's, a, there's a sudden star that's very warming on. A sudden star that's very warming happening at a certain type of SWIP. Now the southern stratospheric warmings are very, very important, especially this one, which is the biggest one for 30 years, and it triggered that crazy activity in the, um, in the jet stream, which resulted in that catastrophic snow in the United Kingdom. Okay, so we're getting into a situation where we be able, will be able to predict these. Now, this has turned you all off, I know. Anybody remember differential equations? Yes. Hey, right. Now, okay, we're going to simplify things. Basically, standard meteorology solves a whole lot of differential equations for the Earth. They say, oh yeah, closed system, blah blah, this equals that, that equals that, this is, it depends on this, and so on. So, imagine this is a, the Earth's atmosphere, right? So it's a differential equation, and you hit it, something happens. And standard meteorology, you predict what will happen. Okay. They can look at the atmosphere now and they say, well, we know it works, therefore it's going to go there. Okay? It does. Well, it does. A day ahead, or two days ahead, or three days ahead. But four days ahead, mm -hmm. <coughs> doesn't work. What has happened? Well, there's an external influence. You see? Well, they know what's going to happen there. But they don't know that actually this is going to happen, you know, in two days' time. <laughs> we know that this is going to happen in two days' time. So, they solve what's called uh, the, the transients, okay? They solve this. Lots of equations for the world, it was nothing. The answer is a standard majority forecast. We solve another equation. Lots of equations for the world equals weather action indicators. The weather action indicators describe these switches when they're going to come, and other modulations, such as what is the moon doing? What is the number of building? <coughs> now you add up these two things, FSM plus S, FSW, they are the solution as well. But the FSM just is a transient, it disappears. So it's of no value for forecasting. But why can we actually get anywhere with this? Let's just say we know these <coughs> equations are too complicated even to think about, that is unlike that. <laughs> so how the hell can we find answers? Well, we do. Okay. Let's go to the, the next one. So there's a concept. <coughs> in, in the world, you could draw a pressure map around there. And you could have a pressure map here, pressure map here, pressure map, pressure map all over the world. You can describe the weather state of the world as a total weather state of pressure map. So the SWT is going to somehow predict what we call the total weather state, the TWS. An SWT state is about the forcing factors which cause the weather. So what I'm saying is that we know that over periods more than four days ahead, this external factors are dominant. If we can predict when sometime in the future it's going to have the same sun, earth, weather, magnetic forcing factors described by an SWT state, we say that's going to happen then, or then more of you. Um, and the last time that happened was then, we'll say, well, okay, the weather then, which is driven by those factors, is going to actually be similar to what the weather will be, it's driven by similar factors. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're not easy to find. And it's not the same as saying, oh, if it was raining then, 
and we had a period of similar weather then as we just had, then we're going to have more sort of similar weather. No. Because these SWT states don't appear in the same order in the past as they do in the future. So you're going to have like weather goes in the past goes A, B, C, D, E. In the future it might go E, Z, Q, W, A, B, whatever. So you're going to have a join up problem. But nevertheless, if you know where to look in the past, you can make a forecast, which is what we do. Those of you that recall ideas of face space, you remember face space? Sort of, you know, one person's pointing at his head, no, that's you know, <laughs> not there. Um, okay. Uh, right, it's just to say that weather repeats, it comes back. There's nothing new going on, nothing new. Similar states are coming, i.e., states in phase space are nearly repeated at predictable times. But why can we actually do it? Well, the reason why we can do it is because the external forcing factors described by the solar weather technique are more important than internal weather noise transients on reasonable time scales of only four days. But, now you think about this question. There will always, for any differential equation, there will be a transient solution. And it always dies out in time. So there will always be a time ahead whereby an external forcing factor, however small, will take over. But the issue is how long do you have to wait? And actually it appears for the Earth as now, it's only four days. If it was a hundred years, it would be wasting our time. But the external factors are big. The sun Earth magnetic loops are big. The, the, the uh, whole the changes in energy flow are big. And that's why it actually works. This is just a point I made, but beware. You know, you can't just look at the weather in the past and say there's one force in front of the course of that. See, when it rains, there's many reasons why it rains. It might be SWT, column vector, 1 to 100, or, or whatever. You know what it means. There's many different causes for it to rain. And you see, we don't solve any equations at all. We just know what well, maybe some equations exist and we can understand where the similar forcing factors. So it's a bit like quantum mechanics. Now, I, I, I say this because I remember Harry Fairbrother, I don't know if he's here, but he was a top flight, uh, he was a technician in, in Imperial College when I was a student. He was tremendous fellow. And he came to one of my events a while ago and he said, Please, I think we do it by something like quantum mechanics. And I thought, Jesus. I do, but I haven't thought of it like that. And that has helped me, just that single stem from him. He was a math lecturer, he might have actually he was chairman of the ASTS. Um, we generate rules which enable us to look back. So the future states uh, are going to be A, B, C, D. We can work out the future SWG states and look in the past. The part similar to the rest of states for this variety of people. And there might be more than one of them. And if you find, we think, oh, there's something which might cause, well, we've got a solar electronic state here. You look right there and we find there's one here and there. And if they both say snow, we say snow. Great. Uh, if one says snow and the other says warm, we say come up and give it a, a C, a, 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 a competency. But you have to use judgment. But this enables us to give relative confidence between forecasts, and the relative confidences do work. If we say A, we are definitely more likely than if we say C, we're not. Now, some examples there. This is just to say, using these SWIFTs and lookbacks, weather action scores 85% of extreme events. 85%. Big extreme events. Maybe the chance of each of them happening by luck would be, I don't know, 1 in 5, even as 1 in 2 is, you know. We win on William Hill. Well, I've been down to William Hill for reasons explained later. 